What is up my faggots? Have I ever told you the story of Kermit Gargar in 4chan's first aviation specialist amphibian? Well here you guys go. <laughs> Commencing experiment in amphibian aviation. Timestamp 6th of the 11th 2011. Frog is being put in cryogenic stasis for docility during the attachment of aviation equipment and will be revived. Frog not becoming docile quickly enough now adding vodka to the equation. Toad is now sufficiently docile attempting to attach state of the art aviation equipment. Aviation equipment attached preparing for launch. Never forget. The day random board sent a toad into space. Have you heard of surstroming? It's rotting fermented herring, the smell of which induces a gag reflex that actually makes it impossible to eat for most normal people. Anyway. Midsummer in Sweden is one hell of a party and I can't remember a single midsummer where people haven't got royally rat assed or fallen over while dancing round the giant phallic symbol that we erect for the party. Rinsing your recently abused palate of rotting fish with large quantities of vodka and aquavit can get you more drunk than you'd care to imagine. But as for the frog dance there is no excuse. Anyway, there's lots of rampant alcohol fueled shagging that goes on. This night I was going to become another statistic. 6am. And the missus and I have swayed home in the lazy and meandering way that the drunks have perfected over an eternity of liver abuse. We were determined to nail each other to the bed when we get home. Now, to be fair to her she was awesome in bed. It's just that this night was about to go wrong. Terribly terribly wrong. We'd both been drinking for nearly 20 hours straight. We were both obscenely drunk. I could hardly keep my body erect, let alone Mr. Winky. Mrs. Nugget decided that, as sitting on my face was always a dead cert for trouser snake charming, she'd hike her grass stained dress up and ride my face. This she did. Rather hard. I'm not only used to this, but a great fan. My tongue worked away at her feverishly. Her cute puckered bucking spider a bare few millimeters from my nose. I was in heaven, and, riding my face like a drunken pro, so was she. She was sat in the perfect position to tug away at any signs of life. And as she and I both neared the point of no return I, mouth full of mimsy, was forced to heave there through my nose at a colossal rate. Much like a jet fighter at full throttle just before takeoff, we both came, and, as fate would have it, the orgasm ripping through her body caused her to grind down harder on my face, and fart forcefully injecting undiluted rectal gases into my air hungry nose ofullll force and totally ripe hot surstroming fart far worse than the initial burst of smell from the tin clean up my nostrils the reaction was instant and completely unaware of her crime and mistaking my convulsions as throes of ecstasy mrs nugget ground down harder on my face as i gasped for air the enormity of my horror peaked as in the full grip of natural bodily rejection I hoid my alcohol rich stomach content, including a large amount of undigested, rotten fish, straight up a pink mitten, as the fetid herring now deeply stuck in my nostrils caused me to start a gagging fit that threatened to be my last, she ran screaming to the bathroom leaving a trail of stomach acid, alcohol and rotten chunks of fish behind her on the floor as it gushed from her burning snatch. TLDR cultural alcohol abuse and Swedish joke food leads to the worst fish mitt never. Oh my dearest pony board. I come before you today to reveal a horrible accident to the pony cum jar project. The place where I was hiding my cum jar was actually on top of a kind of radiator that was connected to our furnace and of course since it's getting colder we light it up. So basically the rainbow dash figure has been boiled in cum it's brown now and for comparison I have also got another glass of cum that's about a week old. I will probably still bury it someday. Yours. P. J. P. Here's the place I was hiding it. The rainbow dash has been boiled in cum. That's a fate I wish on nothing and no one. Wait does this mean the project is over? 
I will probably not be able to add cum to it anymore so I will probably just bury it when I get a chance. Well shit we had a good run. Is it dead after all that time? Fuck. The rainbow dash figure has been boiled in cum. You know a place is really special when you hear something like this. How does it smell? It's fucking brown holy shit. So basically the rainbow dash figure has been boiled in cum. Boiled in cum. Holy shit my fucking sides. Fear not dear Anne and the time will come where I will buy a new jar. My plans are at summer and start again. This little fall shall not stop me from drowning rainbow dash and my seamen. I shall proceed with the project when the time is right. Boiled and cum. Becomes brown. The show must go on OP in the name of science. Maybe boiling it should become part of the project. Fuck. This? Why don't you continue? OP? Because this is a bit too disgusting even for me. Very well. We or 8 lest I support you whatever decision you make as long as that decision is what you will drown rainbow dash and cum. I have seen some messed up shit and not even batted an eyelash but this is fucking disgusting. I would like to say that I appreciate all of your support I promise I will not let you down I swear on me mum. All these people who haven't heard of he j he before. Disappointing. I take it the heating caramelized the glucose. Bet it smells even worse than before. I near puked when I opened the damn closet. Still a great work OP. The board is proud of you. I am following this since the first thread. Just ignore the new fags. So random board I have been having fun over the past few weeks and figured I'd share. Where I work there are thousands of crows that show up everything night. They hang around for like 4 hours at night. Then take off and show up next night. Was reading up on crows because fuck it interested. Apparently they're smart as shit. They recognize faces and can form preferences in people depending on how they're treated. A wild idea appears. I start trying to piss off this group of crows that hang out in the trees near work. I throw rocks at them and shake the tree and chase them whenever I can. Meanwhile the grass crows across the street just shill by the mud Every time I go to McDick's I get extra large fries and feed the grass crows. They start to like me while the tree crows hate my sh tree crows throw nuts and try to shit on me all the time. I dodge shit like I dodge wrenches now. Grass crows still super brothers and now try to follow me when I walk into McDick's. I keep this up for a few more weeks and I'm noticing a bigger divide in the crows. Grass crows now follow me across the road to make sure I get back safe. Tree crows getting more aggressive and sit on my building and wait for me to walk out. I have created the great war between two formerly friendly nations. World War Crow commences. I'm fueling it with french fries. Both nations now jockeying for position near my work. Grass crows try to defend me as the tree crows fly over me and throw nuts and rocks at me. After a few days of tense defense and defense, all goes calm. I expect the usual squawking and flapping as I walk out but there is nothing. I walk out from the covered entryway and look up. All across the trees surrounding my building are crows. More than there have ever been before I recognize one of the grass brothers in the tree closest to me. Call him Reggie. Always gave him the warm fries. I hear one squawk as one of the tree brothers flies out and drops a rock on my shoulder. All hell breaks loose. Crows flying all across the sky. And I can hardly see through the clown. No wonder they call it a murder hue hue. I sit and watch 1,000 to 2,000 crows charge at each other. Bloodied bird carcass is falling left and right. Sit in awe of what I have created. Nearly an hour passes and the cloud thins. Only grass brothers left. Reggie flies down to the ground and lands beside me. Has big scar across left eye. Gives no fucks. I stand and all the grass brothers look up at me. I march across the street and into McDick's leaving the door open for all my crows to follow. Cashier's face. I order 12 extra large french fries and celebrate my grand victory with the grass brothers.